Hi there, I'm Lucy Allison, the Noxious Weeds Coordinator at Coos Watershed Association. Coos Watershed's mission is improving the health of our watershed, and a big part of that is helping to prevent the spread of noxious weeds. In this video series, I'm going to take you to a few places around town and show you some common weeds that you might find in your yard or your property, some ways to identify them, and some tips on how to control their spread. Follow me. So here we are at a right of way with a creek behind us. And I wanna show you a weed that not a lot of people know about. And it's called knotweed, which was introduced as an ornamental and has spread quite considerably around the coos and coquille watersheds. Typically the stems look like bamboo, they're narrow and have nodes like bamboo. Typically they're reddish brown, as shown in this picture. The flower sprays are big, they're white, they have small little petals, and they typically bloom from July to October. So this site right here just got done flowering. There are four types of knotweed in Coos County. Uh, this one here is Himalayan. There are other common ones, which are Japanese and giant knotweed. Now we're here with the Himalayan knotweed. I'm gonna show you the leaves. They're about four to six inches long. They're more narrow and pointy than giant and Japanese knotweed. So the reason why these plants are short is because this area has been mowed repeatedly. If we look behind where the bank slopes down, is more of the typical mature growth form, with the canes growing to about six foot for this species. If you need help with your weeds or if you have questions, please send me your information or leave me a message and I'd be happy to offer suggestions. Okay, on to the next site. Most people are familiar with ivy and how it can quickly overtake trees and structures. Now ivy spreads vegetatively, meaning through the stems that produce roots at the leaf nodes and can attach to the ground and keep growing that way. Now this one here, if it continues to grow up this tree, it'll get enough light that it'll produce flowers. They're a cluster of yellow green flowers and then go on to produce berries, a dark purple berry. Now the berries can be poisonous to native birds, but they're often eaten by starlings, pigeons, cedar waxwings, robins, and the seeds are dispersed around the forest, and this is how it spreads. Method to control ivy. 
is through manual methods. So this can be labor intensive and is a good idea to get some friends together and to have an ivy party. So this one right here is growing up this tree. And what we would do is we would take a screwdriver and gently pry some of these stems off of the tree. And then we would cut the stems all the way around the circumference of the tree. We would let this biomass die up above me. And then we would start to work on the stems that are in the ground here, gently pulling them up about a two foot radius around the tree. And then we would want to do maintenance about twice a year to look for re-sprouts. So here we are at our next noxious weed site, but you might be looking around at all these native plants, be wondering where the noxious weed is. The next one we're gonna be talking about is right here on the ground. So here we are looking at Bitty Bitty. It's a mat forming weed that spreads through these stolons. They're above ground roots that creep along the ground and drop rootlets at these nodes. We're finding this Bitty Bitty at the end of its growth cycle you can see these mature seed heads. They're brown, spiky, and they'll stick to anything like pet fur, shoelaces, boots, and equipment. But I just wanna show you how easy it is to pull out of the ground. It's really shallow rooted kind of like strawberry that runs along the top of the ground. You can just go along and follow these above ground roots and just pull the rootlets out. We've also found that planting wild strawberry to replace Bitty Bitty is a really good way to introduce competition for these weeds. So once the seed head matures, it breaks apart into a lot of different seeds. And that's how it gets spread around the county.
So here we are back in our native forest to talk about our next noxious weed, which is Scotch broom. This is a plant that most people have seen. It's along roadsides and is more often encroaching on our native forests. So you can tell it's Scotch broom by these rib stems. There are three other varieties, French, Spanish, and Portuguese, but the Scotch broom is the one that we see most often here in Coos County. So the name comes from the shape of the plant. It looks like a broom. It's typically multi-branched. So the best way to control Scotch broom when it's relatively small, like this plant here, or even smaller, is just to go around and manually pull it up. You know, depending on the soil, it can be a little bit tricky. You can also use a shovel, but this soil is relatively moist, so it pulls up pretty easy. Actually, we got some of the root mass here. This one is pretty mature. It's about a half or three quarters of an inch in diameter. So this one would require some mechanical tools to remove it. 